Hey, sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush, and today we're going to make our own gesso. Gesso um, usually is pretty thick. Some brands are thicker than others. It doesn't have to be that thick. I actually like it when it's not quite that thick, but this one is about two-thirds used up, but I think I paid 20-something dollars um, for this container of it. And gesso is what, like a primer for your canvas. <clears throat> it gives it what's called tooth. So it's something for your paint to grab to. So you actually end up with not so much paint skipping over the surface or not uh, going on there good. And it, while it has tooth, it also helps to smooth out, you know, any rough parts on the surface. So this is a pretty simple recipe. Normally I make it in those little fake Tupperware things you get at the dollar store when you get a set of 144 and 99 of them are these little tiny things that you don't know what you're ever gonna do with. Well, this is what you do with them. Except I don't have any, I've already done stuff with mine. So I have these little eight ounce containers. I'm not wanting to make quite this much. of plastic spoons. I have plaster of Paris, which has calcium carbonate in it, and calcium carbonate is chalk. So you can buy just the calcium carbonate from um, Now Foods. And I had a little measurer and it just fell off. Anyway, so you can get the calcium carbonate uh, or use this, and this is like four bucks at Walmart, and this makes a whole bunch. I use this for gesso, I use it for modeling paste, I use it for <clears throat> making my own chalk paint, so that's pretty handy to have. And what I call school glue, or white glue, PVA glue, I think is another name or whatever for it. I got these at Dollar Tree. I normally use Elmer's, but I didn't have any. Plain water, and some kind of paint. Normally, gesso is white or black is the only way that I've seen it commercially. Here's a black one. This one is almost more gel-like, definitely even thicker than the other one. And I love this one too. Whenever I'm gonna paint anything sort of dark and moody or whatever, it really helps if your background is already dark. And sometimes, I mean, you can buy black canvases already, or you can just have this and make any canvas you have black whenever you want it to. Um, today, <clears throat> I don't hardly use um, these, the more liquid Blick acrylics. I usually use the ones in the tube, the heavy body, but I'm gonna use this one because why not? Maybe I'll paint something fall colored over this and just a little bit of that depth is, is good on there. But you can use the, the craft paints that you get at uh, Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. Um, whatever kind of paint that you have. So don't feel like you have to have anything special for that. Okay, what we're gonna do is two parts calcium carbonate, or two parts plaster of Paris. Okay, two parts. So this is a two ounce container. Um, these are called portion control cups. And if you want some of these, you can get them at uh, webstrontstore.com so restaurant supply we call these uh salad dressing cups or dressing cups i used to own a restaurant these are called dressing cups okay so i'm going to put two ounces of plaster of paris and i don't know how to make mls into ounces this looks about like an ounce portion control cup, so I'm gonna do that, just say one. So two parts, uh, two parts plaster of Paris to one part water, and stir that up first. And this is what the calcium carbonate in here. You can also use, um, some people use talcum powder, but, uh, or baby powder or whatever, but the talc that's in there has been shown to cause like ovarian cancer and stuff like that. So I don't use that stuff. 
I don't have ovaries anyway, but I still don't use that stuff. Okay, so that's a pretty decent consistency there. That's like a pudding that hasn't set yet. Okay, now we'll add our glue. And it's one. So we're now two plaster of Paris, one water, and one glue. Gives it a little more of that adhesion power. And this will thicken some as it, as it sits. If you were to say, make it in this container, use a, and you know, you can make a mason jar full of it if you want to. But if you were to um, make a big container of it like that, you may have to consider, uh, adding a little bit of water if it's too thick whenever you open it back up sometime. Okay, let's see if I got this shook up good enough. And we'll go one part paint. This is a little bit thick and chunky. You can see this is their economy acrylic, um, like craft paint, but you can see that this is a lot thicker than, you know, the little apple barrel or whatever the other ones are. You could make your gesso pink, you could make your gesso orange or red or black or blue, anything you wanted to do. But basically you, you know, have it on there for the same purpose. But if you're wanting depth in the background, you can use the black. Like I said, I, I just wanted one that you could see really good today. And, and I wanted to use the thinner acrylic paints so that you could know you could use whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy anything except maybe the plaster of Paris. And there you go. That's sort of good wrench dressing thickness. It's not, not that I have lunch on my mind. Okay, so let me see. Got a little canvas here. When you get these, they're already called pre-gessoed. And sometimes you'll get a better one. It'll be double gessoed, but it's always a good idea if you can. I don't always do it, but if you can, or especially if you're making something special or important, to gesso again before you start. So, let's try it out. The proof is in the pudding, right? Whatever that means. So, this will dry almost like a chalky style paint it's a little bit a little bit matte although it's not completely matte because it has the paint in it and everything and the glue can be a little bit shiny too so it's not that but it will have the the tooth in it for whatever you want to put next to be able to grip and you just put it on just like it was paint and then let it dry and then paint whatever you want to over it. A lot of people do all of their canvases um, before they start with a color or something like that to just not be staring at a blank canvas whenever they are ready to start and trying to get motivated and figure out exactly what they want to do. So this is a way to kill two birds with one stone and make that background color be another coat of gesso. Especially when you buy these cheap canvases like this one is here. I got this like in a 10 pack for, you know, $5 or something at Michael's. My grandkids love to paint with me, so I always try to keep a lot of extra canvases around, but they don't always necessarily need to be, you know, $50 canvases. So there you go. This is now gessoed, we'll let it dry. Be It'll be completely dry within half an hour or so. So I'm gonna put that aside, put my brush in my water, and then you would uh, label this on top of your lid. 
I don't have one in my marker here, but I will write gesso on top of here. This has a really tight lid. And there you go. That's how you make homemade gesso. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Bye.